Welcome to Wayne's Weird World. Ah, where is it? Aha, cheers. Oh. We're going to do some serious stuff today. I'll be right back. Gus, that rabbit smells. Just a little one. Yeah. There we are. Yeah. Kekis. When you have this many kekis on an orchid, time to start cleaning it up. Get some of that dead stuff out. But these are already putting out whips that are long enough strong enough now ah, they should be 50 millimeter but oh well I can't wait because I want the strength to go back into the mother plant for flowering hey, look at that good strong good strong kickies this is a dendrobium uh, delicatum no it's not a kingianum it's sort of a cross a natural hybrid between the Dendrobium kingianums and speciosums occurring up the New South Wales hinterland up in the hills up towards the Blue Mountains now when you start this job be prepared I kid you not because they're not always easy to remove. Some, yes, they just give them a light twist and they just pop off. Yep, missed that one. They just pop off. See, a lot of these are really what I consider too small. The roots aren't very large. But I've got lots of pots, and I've got plenty of bamboo meat skewers and clips to uh, secure them in the pots. So if I have 10, 15, 20 of them, I'll sell them on in a year or so for a dollar each, a couple dollars. If they're really healthy and productive and maybe flowering, five dollars each. And being a name variety, apple blossom, the kekis have a little bit more value. Well, the kekis are often tiny. It's an unnamed variety of uh, king yanum. They're not quite as valuable. Now, I've always taken... Oh, that, see that one. Oh, look at... Wow, 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 wow. Lovely, big, long green tips and nicely spread out. Like a spider that's what you really really want to look for when you're looking for kickies <laughs> forgive my uh, my fancy clothes but the uh, the shingle bugged the hell out of me so uh, I need to be able to rub I try not to scratch I don't have any blisters or sores, which happens to some people, but uh, I guess I'm lucky in that respect. Oh, there's heaps of them. Oh, I'm going to have a good 20 of these things. See, some of them, normally, you'd want to leave. But I want, I want this big mother plant to be in full flower and maybe put it in... Uh, the next year's show. See, another one. Much, much, much too small. If they survive, they survive. I've got plenty. I've got more than enough. See, that's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Spread them out like a spider. And then you're in business. Choose 
a nice free draining open potting mix. I mix my own. And uh, it's got plenty of gravel in there, the charcoal. Most of it's uh, pine bark that I've run through a sieve. It's got, uh, I think I kind of got a bit of coir peat. I don't know what happened to that kicky. <laughs> Look at this one. Yeah, oops. I might not bother with that one. <laughs> Put that aside. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's perlite in there and potting, uh, potting sand, propagating sand. Let's keep the terminology correct. And, uh, let's say a little bit. Not aphid, is it? No, I guess not. I had a lot of aphids on the, uh, on the new spring growth after flowering. So this thing got sprayed lots and lots and lots. And I'm still on the lookout when I ever see something like this, wondering what's underneath, whether I've got anything else going on. So even after, oh, that line up there, that's an indicator of the beginning of scale. So after I get all these kekis off it, I'm going to give it a spray with uh, with horticultural oil and uh, I'll look at it underneath here. Yep, scale. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yep. So it's good to get it off the back shelf and uh, and give it a good clean up. What do we have here? <laughs> I think I've got a few. <laughs> Wait, what a minute. So I got all these pots on the weekend from uh, one of the local uh, um, Orchid Society members. And he had written on all the pots with a, a paint marker. Thankfully, a bit of, uh, a bit of turps on a rag turpentine for you people in North America and Canada. Can I, can I, can I, can I, The Canadians. Yeah, yeah, this is beginning of scale, so I'm going to have to have a good look at this thing. Give it a good, good spray and a scrub. Yeah, see this is what I want. I want the new growth. I don't know if you can see that. I want the new growth to be dominating. Now, when I get the kekis out of the way, I'm going to get in there with my bonsai cutters and get some of those old growths out of the, out of the way. Like this thing. This, this is doing nothing. And it definitely won't look very good in the local, uh, local show. Oh, look at the scale on this stem. Whoa-hoo! Oh, I think most of it's dead from spraying before, but... Yeah. Yep, this scale on that leaf. Yeah, I'm glad I got it off that back shelf. Have another quick look around for uh, for kickies. Now that one's going to become a kickie, so I'm just going to rip it off. Isn't that cute? Oh, such a darling. Woohoo! Now, because I have so many, I'm definitely not going to bother with those little ones. If I only had one or two, I would. But I won't. But I won't. See, this is what I want. I want the new growth coming on. See that one? That's what I want. I want to see the new growth getting all the energy. I'm going to give it a good, uh, a good cup full of uh, dynamic lifter. Have I get all these other bits out of the way? And uh, I think she'll be a goer. Okay, let's do the, uh, let's do the, uh, a couple kickers. I'm not going to do all of them. Because, I'm going to do a real quick count. I even have my cinnamon and my paintbrush ready, 
just in case. Now, now look over the kekis. If they have really big scars, I might dust them. Oh, why not? And keeping it in a bundle like this is going to make it so much easier just to go around one after the other. The scars are really quite small. I'm not sure if you can see how small. Let's have a look. See, the scars are really rather small, so I'm not going to worry too much about it, but I'll I'll give them a little bit of a go over. A going over? Whatever. Okay, sit on, sit on. Whatever will be, will be. <laughs> Gus is liking his rabbit. Is that rabbit good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm really not too worried about the uh, the size of the scars. They're tiny. And they're not wet open sores. They're uh, fairly tiny and uh, I don't think it's going to affect the, uh, the kickies at all. I doubt if I lose more than uh, one than five percent, which means in a year or so I'm going to have a whole bunch of for sale. Because if I don't, I'm running out of room for my new purchases of big uh, speciosums, which I cleaned up this morning. Gave a Bit of a scrub and a rub. I gave him a spray with uh, with eco oil, which has uh, a bit of uh, Castile soap in it, a bit of tea tree oil in it, and uh, I didn't go up to the shed to get the uh, the uh, the alcohol, which uh, sometimes I add to it. And I think that's pretty good. Cinnamon! Alright. My nose. Oh, excuse me. Oh. The old ratty clothes. Oh, getting out of the way. But my skin still itches. Week number seven. Oh, so much fun. Oh. It's not as warm as it has been, otherwise I wouldn't have any clothes on. Oh, but then I wouldn't be able to do any filming if I didn't have clothes on. So you're lucky. Okay, two, four, six, <laughs> eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, 20, keep going, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. And guess what? I bought 30 flower pots on the weekend, so it looks like I'm going to use all of them up. All right, let's get into it. Oh, I better get my bamboo meat skewers ready because I'm going to have to do a lot of cutting. And uh, I don't know how many clips I have of the right size. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Close. Close, 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 close. Large and medium. Actually, no, they're not quite the same. Anyway. what I do, leave the green ones, because I use the green ones 
if I'm taking a, an orchid to uh, one of the shows and I need to uh, secure some stems. So what I do, where's my orange one? Yep. Approximately half. Okay. Right. I could even use a bigger prop, but no, this is about right. Just cover it. I'm not going to be too fussed. Secure it. Looks like I'm going to have a lot of label writing. Uh oh. Ooh, these are going to be really top heavy. So these are going to have to go straight into a tray. Because they're not going to stand up very well on their own. That's a little speciosum cross that needs to be potted up. There are two of them there. Uh oh. These are really, really top heavy. I'm going to have to rethink this. Maybe go to the next size up pot. I didn't reckon on them being that top heavy. And unfortunately, even if I use a full length meat skewer, I don't think it's going to be uh, secure enough. Let's try, let's try that. Get the roots in a little bit deeper. Big piece of charcoal, that can go in for my extra large orchids. All right. It will also be uh, more stable once it's watered in. I think, I think, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, these really need to be in a, in a tray straight away. Yep. Trouble is... The first few are going to be the most vulnerable. Once I get about half a dozen or more, I think they're going to be a lot better off. <laughs> this has to go on. I'll put it on the other turntable because I can work on it over here. All right. Big turntable. Okay, now clear battle stations. I'm not very, I'm not very comfortable. I'm just going to bung a second, a couple meat skewers in there just temporarily until I get a few more in there as well. They just don't have enough root system. That's it. Come on. We're going to make a mess. We might as well get into it. All right. What I'm going to do with the ones that don't have a root system, I don't know. I might try and plant them a little bit deeper, which I really rather not do. But, um, come on, just dump them out. I'm going to have to grab them. I can't be fiddling around fishing. And, uh, you need a free draining mix, remember? It needs to be draining within five or ten minutes. Or five or ten seconds. Excuse me. Because if it doesn't, they're going to be sitting with wet feet. And you definitely don't want that. There's not very many orchids that like wet feet. 
even a speciosum that will live on a rock shelf where there's a, a little bit of water seeping down has a lot of its root system up in the open air. If I can keep them stable like that, I think I'm in business. See, a lot of these things are bugger, excuse the English, bugger all root system. Absolutely bugger all. It's one thing to be working with one or two kickies, but when I was working with, with what came from Tiny, I had 150. So this is small potatoes. There's only, there's only 30 here. Come on. Go and stabilize. Ah! Oof. I didn't expect them to be this difficult with uh, as far as stability. But they're long and leggy. Delicotums put out stems that are easily two to three times your average keki or king yanum. Easy. They oftentimes put up put out growth that's nearly as tall or sometimes taller than some of the speciosums. So look at the growth on these. These are almost, let's get a tall one. These are almost, look at that. But if they all had a root system like this, I would be so much more comfortable. Let's just see if I can corkscrew that. No, we'll leave it in that way. Yeah, when you put them side by side, the delicatum and and, uh, and speciosum, you can see where the delicatum gets this tall, long leggy growth. Yeah. Now I've got speciosums that have taller, longer canes, but. Um, you know, when, when you have your normal King Yanum kickies, you put them side by side like, oh! You might as well like uh, get stuck into well, the long haul. Which is what I'm gonna be doing. Then I have these little speciosum crosses, Greta's Gold. Now that, Australian Gold Starburst, Uluru orange crossed with Grandia uh, Mount Larkham gold. That's going to be a nice bit of color in that one. So, that's it. Wayne's Weird World. I'm not even a quarter of the way through. Oh well. All right, cheers. See you next time.